Hello my friends and welcome to Paulina Art. Today I'm going to be painting this pretty colorful parrot. I was inspired to do this painting by a photo from Pixabay. Pixabay is a website that have thousands of photos that you can download for free or you can browse around and get inspired. I'm going to attach a link to the actual photo from Pixabay. I'm also going to link my Facebook page where you can download the pattern that I have created for this painting. This is going to be a very loose and painterly interpretation because this is how I like to paint. I'm going to be using the one stroke or double load technique so anybody can do this painting. If you would like to see how I created this pretty colorful parrot, stay with me and let's paint together. The colors that I'm using today are titanium white, brilliant red, deep cyan, sap green, burnt amber or brown, lump black or black, and medium yellow. Today, I'm working on 11 by 14 canvas that I have coated with black gesso. I applied two coats of gesso and I have placed my pattern where I want it to be. And I've secured it with some painter's tape because I don't want my pattern moving on me. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer my pattern onto my canvas with white transfer paper. If you don't have white transfer paper, you can use white chalk. And what you do with the chalk is you flip the pattern around and go over, not over the whole paper, but just where the lines of the pattern are. And that works very well. Now, as you can see, I have drawn an orange line in here. And that means because I'm working on a black canvas, all this section, I'm just going to trace the outer part of the bird. So from the orange line up, just trace the outer part of the bird. And from the orange line down, we are going to add all these details. Okay, I have transferred my pattern. I will not remove the pattern. I still have my tape in here. It should look something like this. You can see the detail in the body, but not on the top part of the bird. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and paint all this area white. And the reason I'm doing this is because my background is black and all the colors on the top of the bird are very light. They are yellows and reds. Acrylic paint is very translucent. These colors will not look good against my black background. So I'm going to go ahead and paint just this area in white. I'm using my old round brush that works for just about everything. And this doesn't have to be perfectly even, but just a white coat so we can apply our lighter colors later. And I'm adding the effect of feathers on this side here. Just by flicking my brush, it's not a solid white line. While this dries, I'm going to apply a coat of green on this second layer of feathers. At this point, I'm establishing the colors. If I don't like anything, I can always change it at this point. Once my green dries, it's going to look very, very dark because of the black background. I'm going to add blue on the rest of the bird, but I'm going to leave my design so I can see the definition between the feathers when I'm doing more detail. It's just not a solid blue. While my first layer of paint dries, let's do the tree trunk. And again, I'm going to use my reliable round brush. And I'm going to pick up some white 
and some brown and I don't want to blend this too much I want it messy like this now I'm going to start pressing my brush to create the effect of the tree trunk now I'm going to add more brown on this side some shade and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, black and again I don't want to over blend this I can add some at the bottom create the effect of the shadow I can add more white at the top We're going to let all of this dry. I went back and I applied another coat of white. Once this is all dry, I'm going to bring my pattern down. And because I have not removed the tape, it's perfectly aligned. So I'm going to go ahead and with black transfer paper, I'm going to trace the area all the area that we have covered with white paint okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to define the face and apply the first layer of paint on this area i'm going to use this small liner brush and i'm going to mix some of my brown with a little bit of black because i don't want the black to be really really strong i want more of a very dark brown and I'm going to define the areas that make the face. The beaks of this bird are very, very complex. I'm going to leave the lines that define the drawing so I can make some adjustments later. I looked at a lot of close-up photos of parrots just to make sure I got this somewhat right and as you can see the lines tell me the structure of this area that way I can go back and refine it later I'm going to paint the eye With my round brush, I'm going to mix some white with yellow and brown to create this light tan color. Now I'm going to paint the beak. And now I'm going to mix my yellow with a drop of red to create this very rich yellow. Now I'm going to start adding my first layer, applying my first layer of color with this nice rich orangey yellow. And this doesn't have to be perfect again because these are the first layers of this color. And see how translucent the oranges are? I can see my design underneath and that is a good thing because these feathers are going to have some green on them. So I want to see where they are. Now I'm going to paint all the way down with this nice bright orangey yellow. With the same brush, I'm going to pick up some of my red and I'm going to add this color all around the head. And it's coming to the side and up as well. And there's some loose red hairs around here as well. And remember, this is just our first layer. I'm going to add a little more white in here. 
but I still see some black. Okay, let's all this dry. Let's start working on the feathers from the bottom up. When I look at my reference photo, I can see that the feathers are very long and thin, and they have a very distinctive vein in the center. So I'm going to try to create a similar effect. The feathers at the top, they look very much the same, but they get shorter and smaller. When painting feathers on a bird, it's always a good idea to start from the bottom up because the upper feathers overlap on the bottom feathers. And I'm going to be using this small flat brush. This one is a number 12. I'm using this brush is because I can see it's small enough to do one half of the feather and then the other half. I'm picking up some floating medium and I'm going to remove the excess and I'm going to apply my blue in one corner of my brush and white on the other. And I'm going to blend my colors. I want to make sure the colors are blended on the brush before I start painting. So I'm going to start with the bottom feathers with the blue towards the outside and the white in the center. And I'm going to repeat. And I can go over. And there is my first feather. I'm going to do the next one. They overlap each other, so don't worry. And again. I'm going to go ahead and paint the ones that are overlapping this bottom and I'm going to do them the same. I'm going to press my brush and slide down, but I'm going to turn a little bit at the bottom here to create the end of the feather. And I'm going to do the other side and pressing the colors exactly the same way to create the other side. And I'm going to start turning a bit to create the end of the feather. Like that. And I load my brush with paint every single time I do a side of the feather. I'm going to continue. And I'm going to turn a bit. And the other side of the feather. I'm going to do this back one. And I'm going to do the other side. A couple more in here, a couple of smaller ones. Always overlap on the bottom ones. As we go higher, the feathers get a little bit shorter. It looks a little bit messy, but don't worry. It's all going to come together. I'm going to move to a smaller brush. This one is a number 10. I want to use a smaller brush for the green and upper feathers. And I have the same colors on the brush. I'm also going to incorporate some green. And I'm going to start doing the green feathers. And I can go over to intensify the color if I feel I need to. And as I get higher and higher, I'm only using the green now. And I'm adding some yellow as well with the white. You can have fun with the feathers. If you feel your feathers are not looking the way you want them to look, don't worry, because we're going to go over them with some floating after this area dries up. So I'm going to start doing some green and yellow in this area. And I have some white with the yellow. And these ones are going to be smaller. 
the most important thing at this point is that the feathers follow a natural way of growing. I'm adding some red with the yellow as well to create more of an orangey color. So I have my green and the yellow with white and red to start incorporating some of the red in here. The feathers smaller and smaller as I'm coming up. I now have red at one end and white and yellow at the other. Now I'm going to start adding some smaller ones in this area. And these feathers are much smaller. After you do a few feathers, you get the hang of it. These ones seem much easier now. And around the shoulder, I'm just going adding short feathers like this. I'm going to continue adding feathers, yellow and red around this area. I have some green and yellow and red on my brush. I'm going to incorporate some of the green in this area. And you can have fun with your colors. When the brush gets dry, that means you need some floating medium. And I'm just incorporating a little bit of the green in here. And I'm just going to add some green up here. I'm just flicking my brush. Okay, my friends, all our feathers are done. We're going to go back to them and add a little bit of floating, but let's finish the face. I'm going to be using my, my number 10 angle brush because I feel this is the right size. So I'm going to pick up some floating medium, remove the excess, and I have some brown on one corner and I'm going to blend it, but keep it on that corner. This is what is called floating, and we're going to be doing some of that in this painting. Okay, so I'm going to add some dimension to the beak here, and then on this side. And around. I now have white on my round brush. And I'm going to add a bit in here, just on this area. And I'm going to tap just to blend it a little bit with uh, my clean brush. And I'm going to do some floating again with the brown. And I'm adding a little bit of white to create uh, more of a lighter brown. And I'm going to go around this, this area here. These areas that I left without paint. And I'm going to, uh, to dab a little bit of white just in this area. Just to add more volume to this area. And I'm going to blend it with a clean brush. Let's finish the eye. I'm going to mix some white with a drop of black to create a pale gray. 
And I'm going to paint the inside, the eye, the eyeball. And I'm going to add a dot of white right above the iris. And also some white to highlight the gray a little bit on each side. And with the same gray, I'm going to create the effect of hairs in this area. I'm just kind of zigzagging my brush. Now I'm going to go on this side here of the face. And I'm going to create the like feathers coming towards this area. Without overdoing it, it's a subtle effect. I'm just going to add some little feathers in here. And from this point where the beak starts, I'm going to feather towards the eye. And I'm going to do around the eye almost like glasses. And I'm going to come down in there. And then I'm going to add feathers following this, these sections. And these feathers join the red feathers in this area. Just a few. If you overdo it, you can go over with white and then some in here. I'm going to continue to intensify this area of the feathers. And for that, I'm going to mix red with a drop of black to create this really rich dark brown. And I'm still using my liner brush for these fine details. And I'm turning to follow the shape of the head because this is how the feathers grow. And I'm going to do around the eye to define the feathers around the eye a little more. I'm going to add some darker ones here on this side. And I'm going to add some green, some green feathers in here. Okay, my friends, the painting is almost done. To add more dimension, I'm going to do some floating with black and some dark green. And I'm using my flat brush. I'm picking up some floating medium. Sorry, my palette is very, very dirty at this time of the painting. And I have some black on one side. And again, I'm blending, but I still want it just on that side of my brush. You already know what floating is all about. And just to add more dimension, I'm going to add some black floating on the bottom feathers and I'm just adding some in the same way I'm going to start with the bottom ones and work my way up and I'm not doing it everywhere just on some of them and this adds a lot of dimension to the feathers I'm going to do the same, some floating. This time I'm using green, just to intensify the colors. And we can add highlights the same way. Now I have some white with yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight on the shoulder here. I'm also going to add highlight on the on the top of his head. Okay, my friends, our beautiful, colorful painting of the parrot is done. I hope you enjoy this painting. I hope you enjoy this video. 
I hope you learn something new. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.